going on guys this is real estate Q&A investing really <laughs> real estate Q&A investing week 66 it's been a minute uh yes that's that was a lot that 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 took a lot I feel like I haven't been here in two weeks but I did show up last week I did show up last week now it might have been at 11 55 p.m but it doesn't matter. I made my Thursday mark. So we are on episode 66 of the Real Estate Q&A Investing Show, uh, live, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yes, welcome guys, it's been a minute. Um, I know it seems like uh, it's probably been about two weeks that we, since we had a real session. Last week was very, very condensed. It was only like two minutes or five minutes. Um, last week I was on vacation and when I say I was on vacation, I was on vacation. Um, I did not, there wasn't too much real estate stuff that I dealt with. Uh, there wasn't too much real estate stuff that I picked up the phone for, uh, because I deal with that on a regular basis here. So when I go on vacation, guess what? Out done. So uh, so yeah, that's why it feels like it's been two weeks since we did this. I'm out in the field right now. Um, excuse my tardiness. It is 11. No, it's not 11. It's 1222. Uh, normally we do this at 12. Oh my, I am rusty. I am rusty. Jeez. But anyway, yeah, we do this at 12 o'clock. Um, yes, episode 66, bringing you nothing but consistent value each and every week like we've done for 66 weeks straight uh where you can come and ask pretty much anything everything real estate related and uh do my best to answer it in the best way i can i am not disclaimer not a guru i just know a little bit more than your average joe and also housekeeping rules as always i don't ask you guys to sign up for nothing i don't ask you guys to send me money i don't ask for anything when it comes to giving you guys real estate advice uh what i do ask is that you screenshot this post it to your story let folks know what we're doing each and every week because when you do that you let somebody else know what's going on and therefore they might show up at 12 o'clock and have real estate questions that you didn't think to ask and therefore you get value so we get value with folks asking questions again i don't care if you're trying to buy your first house your 10th house uh contractors refi this whatever the case may be i've, I've done a lot of it um so yeah welcome guys uh, yes, we are tardy today. Doesn't matter, we're still here. Uh, William Levant, what's going on? Travis Taxile, what's up? Appreciate y'all popping in here. We got a question. Uh, William says, how was the vacation? The vacation was exquisite. I went to New Orleans for the first time in my life. And I don't know why in my 30 years of living, I have not been in New Orleans uh, before last week. I did. What can you say? There's a lot of food in New Orleans. There is a lot of food and I indulged. I had crab claws, I had crawfish, I had fried catfish, I had shrimp and grits, I had stuffed shrimp, I had gumbo, I had jambalaya, I had red beans and rice, I had um, a billion oysters, I had charbroiled char oysters. Uh, uh, damn. Uh, I had a bunch of different type of breakfasts, desserts, beignets, uh, a whole bunch of margaritas, a whole bunch of alcohol. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was a great time. Uh, there was so much walking that was done. Yeah, I, I just don't know why that is. You know, my I've never been there before. I don't know why, but. I don't even know if I can disclose of this, but yeah, this that's actually where I'm getting married next year. So, uh, yeah, that's why I went. I went to taste the food, check out the venue or the wedding. Um, that's what we did. So that's why I was there, uh, and I just turned it into a vacation. The hotel, hotels we were staying at, awesome, at the Sheraton on Canal Street. Uh, went to the casino. You know, the casino's right there. Um, can't tell you where we're getting married, but we're getting married a couple blocks up. Oh my gosh, it was it was great. Uh, Will says yes, New Orleans. Uh, I'm banned from there. To 
<laughs> I'm bad until 20. That, that's not a good thing because it's a great place to visit. And I'm going back. I do plan on going back uh, before the wedding. Uh, yes, the food wins. Perfect. What? Yes. All of that is why it was a great, great trip for me. Um, I even extended one more day. I supposed to come back Monday. I ended up coming back on Tuesday. Now, the, on the way back, that was where it was problematic because uh, I don't know if you guys have been watching the news, but Spirit and American Airlines are not flying out of Florida. We're not flying through Florida. And we had a layover in Orlando and we were technically stuck for, we got to the airport at 4.30 flight was canceled um i probably waited in that spirit line for about 10 minutes before i said uh what's the when, when, when's the next flight i'm not i'm not about to, i'm not about to play with y'all luckily there was another flight with southwest a direct flight that was 500 dollars that i just went ahead and paid for it and i was like let's let's get out of here i i didn't and when I have, I ain't want to waste no time. Now, don't get it twisted. I ain't got a lot of money, guys. That doesn't mean I got a lot of money. Just means that I did what I had to do to get home. If you haven't paid attention to the news, there are people who are still stranded in airports in Fort Lauderdale, uh, Orlando, and other places uh, that have not been able to get flights home. For whatever reason, we know that American and Spirit they're on strike. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it was a bunch of crap, but uh, you know, I, I'm I'm that's the last time. I'm gonna pay the extra money. I I am. Oh, is that the police? Show the police. Show this police. Uh, I'm cheap. Gotta be cheap. Dang. Car is all blacked out. Anyway, so yeah, I'm just gonna spend the extra money, and I'm gonna fly like you know, Delta or something. Wave says, "I see, I'm Delta all day." Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm convinced. Southwest is fine with me. I'm not really a bougie flyer as long as I get where I'm going. Uh, you know, I've flown American before; they're okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, JetBlue's nice. Um, Delta's probably the best, of course. Uh, but yeah, I, I just ain't got time. I, I, I ain't got time for Spirit no more. I'm 30 years old. <laughs> now, don't get it twisted. If I see a flight that is like 50 bucks to go home, I'm taking it. I, if I don't have any, if, I, if it's like for a day or two where I don't need like a, a second bag, I'm just gonna not pay for any bags and just anyway. I, okay, we're talking about too much flying stuff. Uh, <laughs> so real estate wise, so if you, if you guys got any questions, please feel free to ask. Again, uh, real estate Q and A sessions week sixty six. Um, my news as far as my real estate endeavors, what I got going on right now. Cause you guys haven't really gotten an update in the last two weeks because last week when i did do the session it was like at 11 55 p.m about to be midnight and if i had missed a week i was going to rip my hair out uh i was it was in new orleans and we were i just completely forgot and we were at dinner and um dinner was i was like we had dinner was like 10 30 i was like oh snap i got it i didn't do the live today so I had to wait till dinner was done and it ended up being at like 11.55. I got one question off. My pop, my father asked me a question while I was on the live. And so therefore it counted as a real estate Q&A session uh, for week 65. So anyway, <laughs> so as far as what I got going on and what's been going on over the last two weeks, um, same stuff, busy, busy, busy. Um, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if I disclosed disclosed I, I did on my story but elena has her license now so she's a real estate agent um and she affiliated with the same brokerage as this guy so shout out to amber and company um for always supporting um now we have two agents in the household 
and we're going to do our thing. Um, outside of that, I sold a house yesterday. Got a house that got sold yesterday. And uh, I don't know if you guys remember the blue house with the orange door. Uh, if you go on my uh, if you go on my feed, you'll see it. That that closed yesterday. So my goal was one flip a quarter, and we are on track. We are literally we did one flip first quarter, one flip second quarter. We already have uh, we already have started working on our third flip for the third quarter. Um, and it's already at the point now where, uh, not that house, but it's at the point where I need something else in the pipeline. So I'm about to go back to deal hunting. And usually when I lock in for deal hunting, I'm usually able to get a deal. Now, the real estate guys are unforgiving because there's a lot of people out here scavenging for deals and, you know, uh, you win some, you lose some. And not every time you think you're gonna get a deal or in a time frame you think you're gonna get it. So I'm gonna whoop whoop to the to the to the real estate guys. The last two times I've needed deals and I've locked in and focused, I've been able to get them within like a week or two. So and you know, relatively in good good in a relatively good way I was able to acquire the last three deals when I needed them where I needed them perfect so uh, let's let's see how this thing goes I am not I'm probably going to utilize the market again and I have not been doing any off-market marketing for a while since I picked up the contracting business but um, that is something I'm probably going to get back into at some point uh, maybe even sooner than later um, the thing is is with access to the MLS is free uh, so if you guys ever if you guys are looking for deals obviously off market on market off market it can cost you anywhere between zero bucks and a hundred five thousand it can cost you a bunch of money to do off market marketing because you have to produce uh, marketing material uh, and or trade material for time like cold calling uh, that that's a lot that's a lot so on market you got an agent that's usually representing you sending you deals if you don't have an agent and you just want to look at deals um, talk reach out to an agent right that's in your area and tell them you want to be put on a drip campaign a drip campaign is going to be automated emails that get sent to your email every day that fits a uh, automatic email automatic emails that get sent to your email every day with houses that are on the market that fit the criteria in which you told your agent. So, in order to do that, um, you reach out to your local agent. You say, "Hey, I want to get sent houses, active live houses that are in this specific zip code or within three uh, these three specific zip codes." This lighting is horrible. Why it's doing that? Got me looking like a highlighter. Anyway, so anyway, uh, tell, so find three zip codes, right? Find three zip codes in your area or your city where you want to work in, or just one if you don't want to overload yourself, and tell them in that one specific zip code, I want houses that are anywhere between 800 square feet to 1500 square feet. Or if you only want to work on smaller square footage homes, only want houses between 800 square feet and 1,000 square feet. Or if you, you know, you're feeling froggy, hey, I want houses anywhere between 800 square feet and, you know, 2,000. Or if you don't even want a small house square footage wise, hey, I want anywhere between 1,500 and 3,000 square feet. Now, if you're not used to rehabbing, I would suggest uh, rehabbing something a little bit on the smaller end. Um, just to try to help y'all out. Y'all can rehab however big a house y'all want to. I'm just talking to y'all from experience. Uh, smaller houses tend to be quicker, easier to get into, um, and the rehab budgets are not as large as 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 square foot homes. Even 2,000 square foot homes are, are, are pretty large, um, even 1,800. So just kind of give you guys an idea. So you set the criteria for square footage, 
you say, hey, I want uh, no more, no minimum than two bedrooms for the uh, for my criteria search, uh, and I want at least one bathroom or two bathrooms. Ideally, you want to have it. You want to set your 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 bedroom criteria to at least three bedrooms, one bath. Depending on your location, you might be up north uh, where you have basements, and sometimes the basements are at a height in which you can finish that basement and add a second bathroom. So maybe you don't need. Uh, maybe you're okay with uh, setting your criteria to one bathroom, uh, or you, uh, you can you you can use that room down in that bait. You can use one of those rooms in the basement as a real room, and so your criteria might not be a three one. It could be two one. You know, and you get you get sit houses that have basements um, that you can finish, right? And that just depends on whether your locale, whether you're up north or down south. Uh, down south, you're not going to have any basements so don't expect to you know two bedroom one baths ideally you're appealing to millennial buyers younger buyers you know what i'm saying people want three bedrooms nowadays like unless you're like in a highly populated area uh like the house i just sold yesterday um highly populated area in a very condensed space um with a bunch of walk around spots and next johns it was very condensed two bedrooms one bath a young couple bought it so in that case yeah right but if you're in a more sparse space spread out area um, suburbs people want three bedrooms I'm just saying people want three bedrooms um, preferably three bedrooms so um, so you're gonna set your bedroom bath uh, criteria to three one I would suggest three one uh, then what else three one <laughs> Hmm. Now they have an option to say whether or not you can you can add auction properties on there or not. I don't typically do auction properties. Um, just my preference. Uh, a lot of auction properties get bid up ridiculously high, uh, and I, and what I've discovered is that sometimes it's not even another buyer. It's the actual it's, you're bidding against the actual auctioneer uh, when you're doing those online bids. Uh, so I tend to stay away from those um, HUD properties. You can tell them to include HUD properties. Those are always great, um, but it just depends on if you, they are owner occupants first, which uh, most are. So you have to wait. So basically, they have these deeply discounted HUD homes that they sell and they offer to uh, owner occupants first. Right now, these houses are very appealing to investors because they're discounted at a point where it makes sense for a lot of investors to go in and do what they're gonna do. Um, but what HUD wants to do is promote more home ownership. And so what they do is they enact a, uh, a wait period, uh, as you will, that is strictly for online bidders that are owner occupants. So if I plan on moving into this house and I'm gonna make my primary residence, I can bid on this house between, I can't remember if it's 14 to 21 days, right? Investors can't. We have to wait. Now, if there are no buyers in between uh, the 14 or 21 days or however long the time period is, I can't remember off the top of my head, then investors can then open it up and start uh, bidding on the property to win it out. Um, it just, it's a, you just gotta wait. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta wait and see if those properties become available or if they don't become available. Uh, most of the time, owner occupants are gonna get first stab at it than the investors. So those are great to include in the criteria. Um, mm, 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 mm. That's it. I mean, at this point, you just wanna start getting at, oh, the most important thing, price points, right? So I typically, and in, in, this is local specific, my market is in Baltimore. We have houses, all types of price points uh, in which, depending on what kind of investor you are and, and how you like to move and shape, you can buy in the low 10s, 15s, 20s. You can buy in the mids, 30s to 60s, 70s. You can buy from 80 to 100. You can buy investment properties all the way up to almost $150,000. In some houses, you can buy and flip for almost, you know, for 200 and, and, and the, the ARVs are there. So like Baltimore is, is it's, it's a wide net, right? So your area might be a little bit different, 
right? So if we're talking DC and I set my threshold to only show me houses that are in between $30,000 and $60,000, you're not gonna find anything. Your, your email is gonna be blank for months and maybe for years, because I don't know if you're ever gonna find anything in DC for $30,000 to $60,000. Uh, that's the market, right? But here in Baltimore, I set my threshold to thirty, sixty thousand dollars. I'm getting some. I'm getting some hits. I'm, I'm going to be getting houses sent to me. So for me, I'm going to set my threshold to anywhere. I want houses that are anywhere between thirty to one hundred and and twenty thousand dollars. Right. Thirty is not at the point where thirty is cheap, and I know what I'm getting at thirty. I, I know that I'm getting something that is uh, needs to be rehabbed. Let's just put it that way. Uh, and it's probably not going to be in an area in which is, um, you know, an A or B class area and sometimes even a C class area. I know I'm probably going to get in a lower class area. Um, and that's just what comes with price, uh, houses at that point. But I also know that I'm not getting a shell. I also know that I'm not getting like a $5,000 house, $10,000 house. $15,000. Those houses at those price points um, tend to be here in Baltimore, uh, tend to be shells, del very dilapidated. I don't really want to mess with those. I'm not into full gut rehabbing. I am more into value add. Let's get in there, add value. Let's get out of there. Um, so for me, 30 is my threshold. I go all the way up to 120 because there are certain neighborhoods where you you're buying at 100 or 110 or 120, and you can still put in enough money to get uh, an ARV that's going to yield you a good payday. Whether you're flipping, uh, well, really, if you're flipping, um, because from a rental perspective, um, me paying 100 to 120 thousand uh, dollars, my cash on cash return, unless I'm getting two thousand dollars in rent or like. 15 to 60, 1700 dollars in rent. Um, after a certain point, uh, uh, 100, 110, 150, 100, the, it, as a rental, it doesn't make sense for me. You guys, different. Remember, everybody's cash on cash uh, threshold is different. Mine's 12%. I will drop as low as 10% only if I'm in a highly appreciating area. You guys might be okay with 8%. You guys might be okay with 5% on you right so for me uh i know that after about a hundred thousand dollars if i'm not getting a very high if the, if the rent rates in the area aren't like very high uh i it's the it's not gonna make sense for me monthly right i'll give you guys an example i keep it fucking with y'all like i i, I tell y'all what the real is right because whatever i mean well I don't keep it. I, don't, I have never told you guys how many rentals I have, how many doors I have. I probably will never, that's that's one thing I probably won't do. I won't tell you guys how many rentals I have or doors. At some point I will, but not right now. Maybe when I, maybe when I get to a hundred. Just know I don't have a hundred. <laughs> Just know I don't have a hundred yet, uh, but I'm on the way. So I give you an example. Uh, you know, let's say you, Let's say you buy a house for $75,000, right? And then you put $25,000 in. Uh, then you, now you're all in at $100,000. Well, when you go and refinance that house, I'm referring to the birth strategy. Um, let's say your mortgage is now $900 and, uh, or not almost $1,000. And the rent rates, you're able to get a rent rate for $1,500. That's really good. That's 500. That's close to 500 gross every month. Uh, cash on cash. That's that's pretty good. But the higher I go with the purchase price, let's uh, my all in cost. Let's say I'm at 105 or let's say I'm at 110. Well, now my mortgage is not a thousand dollars. Now my mortgage is a thousand and fifty dollars. And then it's a thousand. It's eleven hundred dollars. And then it's 1150. So it starts to dwindle and dwindle and dwindle. And if I'm in an area where my I'm not getting $1,500 in rent, and I'm in, and the average is $1,200, you can see how that $500 can shrink very fast, depending on where you buy uh, and your all-in cost 
for that property. So that's why it's always key. You know, people want to buy rentals. Great. But are your rentals making you money? Are they profitable? Uh, do they uh, have enough? Uh, is there enough juice? Is there enough? How, what's it say? Is it squeeze in the juice? Juice in the squeeze? Is there, is there enough room for you to make money uh, with your rentals? That's why I say, if you're going to buy rental properties, you got to make sure that your all-in cost, your all-in cost and your rent rates in the area, your market rent rates in the area are the most important things because they will literally dictate how much return or cash on cash profit you're going to make on the back end for the money that you put into the property. So that is just key. I, I can't stress that enough because there's a lot of people out here buying rental properties and they only collecting a hundred dollars a month. You spent a hundred and something thousand dollars and got this mortgage and you only collected a hundred dollars a month. I can't help you with that. To me, that's a bad deal. That's just my opinion. Some people will I got into it with a, I got into it with, I didn't get into it, but there was somebody on Twitter that made a comment about how uh, buying a house, buying a rental property for $150,000 and was only collecting like $1,200 in rent was a, you know, I, I, I was like, okay. It made it seem like that was okay to do. And I'm like, I don't bother people on Twitter. I don't let people tweet whatever they want to do. And the last thing, I remember telling myself uh, at some point was that I won't be telling people what's a bad deal or what's not a bad deal because people get real sensitive about houses and properties that they think they're going to buy or that they've already bought. And when you tell them that, hey, your numbers aren't really the greatest, um, they get upset, right? They get upset, right? Even if it's a house they, they're looking at and they just... Oh, I gotta have this house. I gotta have this property. I, I already running the numbers. They don't look the greatest, and then they get butt hurt. Listen, I bought bad deals. I keep it fucking with y'all. I bought bad deals before. So I want to say deals or deal. I think I bought one bad deal. You know what I'm saying? I think I bought one bad deal, but regardless, there's a purchase that I have in my portfolio that wasn't the greatest of deals. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, you can't be mad at somebody else that's pointing out that you bought a bad deal. You did it. The best thing you do is like, that's the best thing that could ever happen to me because now I know what not to do. Or now I know how to run my numbers a little bit better to where I am profitable, right? That bad deal that I have, I can't sell it right now. I'm gonna lose money. I already lost money on it. It is what it is. So I, I don't tell people they got bad deals for that very reason. I, pause, We're, let's put a pause on this because we got some folks that came in here and I was about to go off on a tangent. Uh, what's going on Kendrick? Uh, compensate her, what's going on? Kiwi King 21, what's up? Mr. Tu Mr. Tuel, hello. Wody Benjamin, <laughs> Wody Benjamin, what's up? Asiato? 1911, I hope I said that right. What's going on? Doc Easy, what's up? Remy, Rem Timmy, Rem Timney. Hello, how you doing? Appreciate you popping in here, guys. If this is your first time here. Uh, this is the Real Estate Q&A Sessions, week 66. We do this each and every Thursday, 12 o'clock. Today I was late, don't worry about it. Just know that it's gonna happen every Thursday. This is week 66 where you can come in and ask anything, everything real estate related. There is a disclaimer on the board. And the disclaimer is that I am not a real estate, real estate guru. I just know a little bit more than the average Joe. Now, you guys can look at my feed, my stories, and all that stuff. I'm really out here in the field. Most of these guys selling you guys courses and, and, and crap like that, they ain't out in the field. I'm out in the field. I can. I got a trunk full of tools, right? I, you can listen to me or you don't. You don't have to. I'm just telling you. I buy houses. I renovate houses. And I have a contract and company. So... Listen to me. I don't want to listen to me. Refinance, birds, rental properties, flips, uh, wholesaling. Um, done it all, pretty much. So, uh, 
don't have to listen to me. Now, if you are going to be here, what I do ask is since this information is free and I'm not asking for you guys information and I'm not begging you guys to pay for something, the one thing I do ask is that you screenshot this, post it to your story, let folks know what we're doing. That's the least you can do for the time that I spend every each and every week to tell you guys and answer questions about real estate. And if you do have questions, please hit the comment section below and or where the question mark is and I'll do my best to answer your question. If I don't have the answer, I'm gonna tell you I don't have the answer. But most of the time I can give you guys an answer. Uh, Mr. Twell says, new to this and we spoke before on Clubhouse, I'm looking to start. And as I stated on the app, my wife and I both have our VA loans as well. Just wanted to get started. What is stopping you, Mr. VA loans yourself? What is stopping you? Because if you got some VA loans, uh, you are a winner. Because VA loans, <laughs> VA loans are, are, are very, uh, very, very, very nice loans. Now, what I will tell you is this. What I will tell you is this. In today's market, just because you do have a VA loan, it might be favorable for you, but from a competitive standpoint and you going out there and trying to secure a property via on the market, VA loans are cash is king, right? If you guys haven't been out here on the market, on the open market looking for deals, well, if you, ha if you have it, let me inform you. Uh, it is wild, crazy competitive. People are pulling up with real cash. Real cash. You know what I'm saying? Real cash. So any loans, precedence-wise, offer-wise, you're not going to be at the top. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to be at the top. And that is something that is, uh, how should I say it? makes it difficult for buyers that are utilizing some form of financing via banks. Um, you know, I can give away. Yeah, it's it's just tough, right? I I I don't use bank loans. I haven't used a bank loan in. Um, I only have one property in the portfolio with uh, that is a on a bank that was bought with like conventional financing. Um, no, two. My first house and then another house. My first house I bought with an FHA loan back in 2017. Um, and then the other house I bought like two years ago with a conventional product. But all every other every other property in the portfolio is all hard money. And um I am even with hard money, I can say I am a cash buyer. Technically I'm not a cash buyer, but in a sense I am a cash buyer because I can close fairly quickly. And what a cash is king, right? If I'm buying a property and I'm not having any inspection. Sorry about that. That was um, somebody calling me from New Orleans. And I'm pretty sure it's important, but I always make time for you guys, and so they'll they'll get they'll get a call back. So anyway, um, I forgot what I was even talking about. I forgot what I was talking about. Somebody remind me what I was talking about, please. Uh, Doc Easy says, "What type of unit did you close on yesterday?" Uh, so if you go on my feed um, and see the house that was blue and the orange door. Uh, I sold that yesterday. So we had some buyers that came in from Pittsburgh. Um, they ended up, so actually with that house, I I had a buyer, they backed out, and then we went back on the market. Two weeks later, uh, we found the new buyers. They're from Pittsburgh, a couple, two bed, one bath. They never lived here before, but they loved the area. It was great for them, they closed. I made, you know, a couple dollars and, you know, that's that. So, uh, so yeah, that's what we sold yesterday. I wanted to keep that as a rental, but the purchase price that I got it for, I was direct to seller. The only way I could buy that house from the seller, direct to seller, was negotiating at a price that was well over 100. And at well over 100, I could not, um, at well over 100, I could not make, I could not be profitable renting the property. Uh, I even thought about Airbnb, but then I was like, yeah, I could do the Airbnb thing, but I don't do Airbnbs. And I don't have a system set up for Airbnbs. Now, it's not saying I won't do them ever, but I'm focused on accumulating more doors and uh, in the way in which I've been doing it and trying to get better at it. So while I don't wanna keep diving into new things, 
and then not being proficient at them. So I am, you know, at a point now where I know how to acquire properties, I know how to fund the properties, I know how to renovate the properties and put tenants in, refinance and move on. So that just eliminated those two options and I said, well, let me flip it. It's a two bedroom, one bath, 800 square foot house that's small with no with a basement that doesn't need to be finished. Great, so really I'm only dealing with two floors, really four rooms, living room, kitchen. There was no dining room, living room, kitchen. Bedroom, bedroom, bath, easy. So it wasn't easy by the way. The rehab was easy, but there was a bunch of crap that came with it. And then one lesson that I will tell you guys, I know I'm getting off topic. Got you. Uh, I got you confidence there. I got you. So the one thing I can tell you guys, the one lesson I got from that house, right? I remember I went on live with you guys and I told you guys, I walked you through the house and I was telling you guys how easy it was and how it was going to be in and out, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, we were. Like, I think I finished that house in like five weeks, five or six weeks. Uh, so it's fairly quick, right? But one thing I learned is that I don't care how big, how small, how how much I think I can save on the budget, how well, I, how fast I think I can get the house done. I probably won't ever say a house is going to be easy to rehab because there were a lot of problems that I ran into with that house. And you know that cost it that cost it uh, that cost more money than I anticipated, and so the lesson is you know don't don't get too ahead of yourself, right you're never too big for what's going on or what can ha potentially happen, and when you're dealing with houses and you're dealing with you know the inner workings the plan all this stuff that goes into renovating a house, there's bound to be stuff that goes wrong, and you cannot think that you are you know just just that that guy or that woman you know what i'm saying and, and and that shit won't happen to you which in turn happened to me so i thought the house was gonna be easy i thought we was gonna have that thing sold in like may or june uh no like may we ended up selling in july you know had a had a couple setbacks i had to put a whole new roof oh my gosh so yeah, you won't be hearing me say a house is easy before I actually get into it. So there's the lesson learned. I hope you guys, uh, you know, listen closely to that. Uh, Mr. Twelve says, very true. That's why I need people like you and hard money lenders. Yeah, hard money lenders are everywhere. Uh, well, they're not everywhere, but they're everywhere. Uh, go to your local meetups. I don't know about COVID restrictions. Go to your local meetups. Go to meetup.com. A lot of those, uh, a lot of those people that host those meetups have groups. Join those groups ask about lending facebook groups in your local area i know here in baltimore there's a investors um there's a like a like fifteen thousand member investor network here in baltimore doesn't mean that everybody's an investor but that's where people go and ask hey can i who who's a lender who are you guys use it and people drop recommendations all the time after a certain point you're going to start seeing the same names there are a couple national lenders um, I know uh, a lender I use. No, the lender I use does not is not national. Um, but there is a uh, my refinance lender, uh, Dominion. They are they're in multiple cities, um, and they lend in multiple cities. So you can always utilize those. Um, I like personally, me personally, 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 I like local lenders because <clears throat> they know the market and they're going to be able to tell me, hey, this ain't going this ain't going to fly over here, uh, or this is not going to work over here. Um, the numbers you think you're going to get over here, we've seen people try to do it and it's not going to work. So it's just an added layer of, uh, of, of security. Um, and my lenders, I've only been with one lender, so I can only speak from one perspective. And my lender has been phenomenal. So shout out to them. Uh, you know who you are. Just shout out to y'all because it wouldn't be possible. So uh, Compensator said, you were saying you're not a cash buyer. Yes. So with hard money, you're not a cash buyer, but you are a cash buyer because you can close quick. Whereas with a bank loan, VA loan, you're not closing for 30 to 60 days. You have some type of contingency sometimes. Sometimes you don't or, you know, like FHA, you can't waive, you know, contingencies. They just, they're not going to lend to you if you don't have contingencies in there. So <clears throat> what is going to be king? Cash offers or hard money offers. Uh, no contingencies as is closing 
anywhere between three and four weeks. Now, could your hard money close in seven days? Lender close in seven days? Yeah, but your title company has to order title, lien sheets have to get back, they have to do their whole thing. So I don't like to tell, I don't like to put offers out and say, yeah, I can close in two weeks unless I know the title work is already done. If the title work hasn't been done yet, I know that when the title company, if I win the bid, the title company has to send out for lien, sheet, uh, lien sheets uh, to, through the city. They have to wait for it to come back. And that takes um, that takes anywhere between like a week and a half to two weeks sometimes. And sometimes longer. So though, uh, I already know that if I set a closing date of three weeks, I'm really pushing my title company to do a lot in a short amount of time. Now, that's not to say they can't do it because they are awesome, they're phenomenal. Uh, but I don't want to put people in that predicament because it, 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 it creates more opportunities for something to be messed up. And I don't want to do that. So I typically just say 30 days. But know that if I want to close sooner, I can close sooner. Right? So that's why a hard money loan, uh, hard money, using utilizing hard money gives you a better competitive advantage than you know, a, a bank loan or bank financing. Now your interest rate is significantly higher, but you have to look at things from a bird's eye view. Uh, access to cash. You have quick access to cash. It's gonna come at a premium. It's, just, it's bridge money. That's all it is, is, it gets you from point A to point B. So yeah. That cash buyer, uh, Mr. Chua says, I love this because you're giving great info and not pushing to sell books. I follow you and love your properties. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm not up here, uh, trying to sell nothing, you know what I'm saying? I, I literally do this every single week and I give time. Uh, there's some notable folks that come in here each and every week, uh, and that have uh, been here each and every week. Sneak fee since day one, you know what I'm saying? I haven't, I don't see a couple. Wait for a couple other folks, Mr. Thomas. To you, he's been consistent for probably about three, four week, uh, three, four months now. Uh, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? There goes my fiance Elena. Uh, Devin, what's going on? Sleep when I die. What's going on? Appreciate y'all for popping in here as always. Again, um, you know this is real estate Q&A session. This is week 66, uh, guys. If you got any questions, concerns, please ask in the comment section below and or where the question mark is, and I will do my best to answer those questions. Um, let me see for, for Mr. Oh, a Asiato 1911. Am I saying it right? If I'm saying it right, give me a thumbs up. If I'm not saying it, give me a thumbs down. Uh, but Mr. Asiato, <laughs> I'm getting mixed up with Mr. Thomas to you. Uh, but Asiato 1911 says, for somebody reaching out to a hard money lender, what percent do you typically need to put up yourself? So, this is why hard money lenders are great because with bank loans, bank financing, you're good. You have to. It's either you fit into this box or you don't. If you don't fit inside the box, they're not lending to you, right? Oh damn, I said it wrong. Um, <laughs> that's a big. That's a fat ass thumbs down. <laughs> Oh man, my bad, dog. Uh, hey, Mr. Uh, Ace, Ace, Aceito, Aceito, Aceito. Thumbs up, Aceito, or, or or hit the hearts, Aceito, Aceito, nineteen eleven. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's going on, Don underscore E twenty two? Appreciate you popping in here. Uh, but, but yeah, so that's why I love hard money lenders is because they have, yeah, thumbs up. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, so with banks, yes, you have to, if you fit into the square or you don't, right? It's either you got the credentials, the criteria, or you don't. But hard money lenders, it just depends on them and how they would like to lend their money out. Now I will tell you this, hard money lenders, do not make any money hoarding their bread. They're supposed to distribute this money out to people like you and me. That is their job, right? So it's not to be like, hey, uh, you know, 
Sorry, we have the strictest of strict criteria. You gotta have an 800, 750 credit score. You gotta have $50,000 in the bank. And you know, you gotta have, uh, what else? Uh, something else, I forgot. But anyway, that's not their job, right? <clears throat> so hard money lenders will have a criteria of, you know, obviously they want to see that you have some money in the bank, which is going to count as your skin in the game. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so if you have skin in the game, they know that their money that they're going to be lending to you is not all on them. They're not the only person putting equity into this deal. They know that you are going to have to put equity into this deal as well and that you have to fund the funds to be able to do so. So unless you are just you know, uh, really, 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 really good in or close with a hard money lender that is like got you in their elite club, um, you're always gonna have to have some skin in the game, right? If you've never dealt with a hard money lender before, uh, chances are you are gonna be taxed a little bit on the, your first deal because one, it's all, a, it's all a relationship business, right? They want to lend the money out, but they also wanna know that you are gonna do what you say you're gonna do, which is return their money. That's what they want. They want you to return their money. They want to know that if you say, hey, I'm going to go buy this house for $100,000 and I'm going to put $50,000 into it and I'm going to sell it for two seventy, dollars that you're going to go out and do that. And if you do that the first time, they're going to be more inept to lend to you again. Do it some more. Guess what? They're going to be more inept to do. Oh, lend to you on multiple deals, right? Oh, you... Doing it more and more. Oh, we might say instead of you, instead of us giving you 10% on your interest rate, we might be able to, you know, bump you down to eight. You know what I'm saying? So now you have precedence. You you've shown that you do what you say you're gonna do. I have a and also that you're making your monthly payments on your on your 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 monthly interest payments every month. That is probably the number one thing. So if you're not making your monthly interest payments every month, um, chances are you can kiss that goodbye. Right, um, knock on wood. You know, I, I think the biggest reason why I am uh, I, I have a relationship with the hard money lender that I have is because I have done what I said I was going to do, and I've been paying them. I haven't missed a payment <laughs> not once every month. So that goes a long way. It's even through the pandemic right and so that is uh that's me right um so make sure that you know it's a, again it's a relationship thing um stuff happens obviously i we, they understand that they get that but as long as you have as long as you are confident in what you're doing and can assure them that they will get their money back in the way in which you tell them they're going to get their money back whether it be a flip or a uh rental uh, refinance uh, that you do that you know what I'm saying uh, and the more you do that the more you build that rapport the more deals they lend to you um, you know the more deals they lend to you at one time uh, and you know the more opportunities you have to get a lower inch monthly interest rate uh, for whatever loans that they're giving you you know what I'm saying you might go from a 12% down to an 8% that's huge you know what I'm saying uh, some lenders have just a hey our, 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 our interest rate doesn't change across the board for everybody. And that's fair. That's how they want to lend, right? There's other folks that say, well, we go down as low as 8%. There's others that say, hey, look, if we if you've never done a deal before, um, your interest rate is 12% or it's 14%. And after you do your first deal, we'll bump you down to 10. But you got to do your first deal first. So that is how they do it, right? It's up to you to shop different hard money lenders. You shop them just like banks. You ask them, hey, you know, what are your lending terms? Um, you know what I'm saying? What What are your criteria? What do you guys ask for? Some want a specific credit score. Some really don't even care. Um, there's a bunch of different factors. But the idea is that you don't have to fit in a square peg hole. I said square peg hole. You don't have to fit in a square for a hard money lender uh, or hard money lenders to lend to you. They're looking for people like you. So go and reach out to them. Type in a Google Hard Money Lenders in whatever area you're in and start making some calls, right? Get three lenders in queue, figure out what their criteria is, and then, you know, go look for a deal. 
Don't ask them to start funding you stuff, funding you right now. You're just getting information, right? Nobody wants to waste your time with somebody who ain't got no deal. I'll just let you know that right now. And when you, and when you do have a deal, you got to come correct to them. And you got to be confident that, hey, I am... I'm looking at that property right there. I want to purchase it for this price. The ARV is this, and this is how much I'm putting into it. Make sure you show up with a video. So typically when I give, when I inform my lender that I want to purchase a deal, I pull up with, or I send them a text with the purchase price. I send them, uh, I said it's purchase price. I send them the purchase price, what, what I plan on buying the house for. I send them the renovation costs, what I plan, how much money I plan on renovating the house for, and the ARV, how much the val how much value the house is gonna be after I renovate it and potentially sell it in or you know uh, uh, rental refinance out of it, right? Those three things, and then I also include a fourth thing, which is a walkthrough video. I'm not asking them about the deal before I even even gone to look at it. It's just wasting time. I, you know what I'm saying? So I usually go look at it first, get a video, walk through video while I'm there, and I include that in the four things that I send them. They're gonna run their numbers, and they'll say either it's a good deal or it's a bad deal. But you gotta come, those are the most important things to show up with, to show confidence and show the most important things that they're looking for to where they can believe that you know what you're doing and you got to be confident in what you're doing at the same time too and you won't get confident in this business whether uh whether it comes to evaluating deals running numbers uh going and doing videos and being able to point this out point this out you're not going to get confident in doing any of this crap any of it none of it None of it. I promise you, none of it. And I even go to the extent of hopping on the phones, talking to sellers. None of it. You will not get confident in doing this stuff if you do not go out there and actually do it. And fuck up. Excuse my language. Screw up. Fuck up. Whatever the case may be, you're not going to feel until you've done it multiple times or have actually done it. So if you're sitting on the sidelines right now, and if you haven't done a damn thing, if you haven't even put in an offer yet, you ain't going nowhere. You're going to keep coming to this, listening to me, going on Clubhouse, going on YouTube, uh, telling people what you want to do, and you'll never do it. You'll never do it. You'll never feel confident. There's a lot of people that want to get in the real estate business, and they wait and waste time. They wait and waste time because they feel like they haven't gotten enough of this or, you know, I've been looking at how this guy does it for the past three months where I've been taking his course and then, oh, dang, that guy, he does it that way and that looks interesting. So let me figure out how to net. You just, hey, you really ain't going nowhere. You ain't doing shit. I was that person. Long time, long age ago. I, I couldn't even I couldn't even talk like this but I ain't afraid to do shit you know what I'm saying I, I learned most of what I've learned by screwing up and getting out there and being in the field and just being physical I, I real estate is a contact sport there oh dang that's a good tweet real estate is a contact sport you have to get out there and uh, create contact. If you think that you can do this from behind a desk, then you must have over a million dollars or something like that. That's fine, right? If you have your if your life is set up like that, mine ain't set up like that. So I had to get out there and be in the field. And ain't nothing better uh, to ain't nowhere better to learn and to humble you up than in the field. I promise you that. I. Every day, y'all see y'all should see these work boots every single day, right? And I know you guys have jobs, so if you have a job, I'm not saying you, you shouldn't have a job. I'm just saying it's a contact sport. So whenever you have the opportunity to get in the field, to do things, to meet people, to see this, to do that, go do it. Tell that agent today you want uh, you want to be put on a drip campaign. Well, I need to start looking at houses, but I've been waiting. 
Call an agent and tell them to put you on a drip campaign. Today. It takes them five minutes. Houses are going to be sent to your email every single morning. You got to start somewhere. Y'all got me on a tangent, yo. I, and y'all ain't even do nothing. <laughs> but that's just how I feel. That's how I feel when it comes to action. The folks that show up here every every week, they know. It's about accountability. And don't get me started on YouTube because I'm on, I'm on a roll. <laughs> don't get me started on YouTube. Uh, but y'all say y'all want to do this stuff. Go out there and do it. Don't waste no time. Uh, what's going on, Life and Times? Uh, Acito. Acito. Yeah, I got you. Good info. Appreciate that. Do you include timing on return of their money? Uh, what's going on, Miss September? How you doing on 929? Is that, is that Jasmine? Stop FaceTiming me. Guys, I am on my live. My bosses are calling me. My broker, broker bosses. FaceTime. Anyway, uh, no, I got I got like another ten minutes with you guys because uh, I started late. Um, so, do you include timing on return of their money? I am not sure. So, oh, so I, I guess what you're asking, or I hope, I think what you're asking, uh, timing. So, yes, hard money is bridge money um, at a higher interest rate, and the loan terms are shorter so they're anywhere between six and twelve months uh, if you go past that you might be charged a point or two points every month after that um, I know there's p uh, penalties for uh, for holding on to that loan longer don't ask me how I know experience uh, you ever got her said you're gonna do have a rehab done in six months and taking I don't even want to tell y'all how long I've been in one of these loans. <laughs> the house from hell. No, the triplex from hell. That's what I would call it. The triplex from hell. That's a whole different story. If y'all ever want to ask me about the triplex from hell, I could literally go on for a good 30 minutes about what I've endured uh, with this triplex uh, that I bought in 2019. I call it the triplex from hell. You guys want to know the story? I can tell you the story, but it's going to take 30 minutes. So we can't do that today. We ain't doing that today. But just know that hard money loans, their terms are typically shorter. If you go past that, depending on the relationship you have with your lender, you can either get charged a point or two every month after that, or they can say, you know what, just get your shit together and get us that loan back. Uh, and they might excuse the points. It just depends, right? If you're new, um, you best believe that you're going to be on a tight rope, um, even with the interest rate that you're charged up front. But if you are experienced, you know, and, and something happens and you've done multiple deals, you're going to get some leeway, especially if you've been a nice guy to the lender. You've been paying them their money every month. That's all, they, that's all they care about. It's just like banks. Banks really just care about you fitting into that square peg, that little square and you paying them their money every month. Hard money lenders are no different. They just want their money every month. That's it. You can go past those loan terms. They might charge you a point, but shoot, if you still paying them their money, their interest money every month, everybody happy. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's happy. So, <laughs> so that is the one thing I can tell you guys. I know you guys asked about hard money uh, a couple times um, today. The biggest thing I can tell you is that if you are interested or looking into hard money, you're going to get hit with a first time newbie fee of, you know, a higher interest rate and you might have to put some money down, right? Uh, and then, you know, your your terms are going to be a little bit more stringent than somebody that's done, you know, 20 to 30 deals. You know what I'm saying? So that is key to remember uh it is about time to dip set out of here it is 120 and i am out in the field i took a break and i parked on the side of the road to do the show uh just because i love y'all this is week 66 week 66 next week is 67 that means we are 
33 weeks from 100? I don't do math on air, but I, I just did, and I think I'm right. 33. 33 weeks away from 100. What's that, Mike? What's going on, Mike? <laughs> I ain't say you the man, bro. No, I ain't the man. I am not the man. I'm not. Ah, right, that's that's y'all, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all run circles around me. I'm just out here trying to keep my head above the damn water. That's that's what I'm trying to do. You know what I'm saying? No, you the man, brother. You the man. You the man. You the man. Um, uh, but yeah. So we're almost at a hundred weeks. Uh, yeah. We're just gonna keep it moving. We're gonna keep it moving. The most important thing. Yeah, cigars. So let me know. I uh, I got a whole box of uh, I got some, I got some. I think it's twenty five year anniversary Cohibus. I got, I got, I got some stuff. You know what I'm so yeah, let's do cigars, so man. Text me, text me. Um, yeah, I know, I know you've been having an eventful time <laughs> with them red, uh, with them orange stickers. <laughs> red orange stickers, they're great. Oh. Yeah, I found out who snitched on me on one of my orange stickers. Uh, I literally found out yesterday. That shit happened like two two years ago, but I found out. Uh, crazy. <laughs> but uh, outside of that, guys, um, I told you about hard money. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and end this thing. So remember, 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 remember this. All this money and real estate and investing, that shit is great. It's cool. We can go make money. But please appreciate the time you have with your family, your loved ones. Um, don't take that time for granted. People who are here today, they're gone tomorrow. It happens every day, B. Literally happens every day. One of my father's frat brothers literally passed away the other day just out of nowhere. So, I'm telling y'all this, I tell y'all this every time I get the opportunity to. Don't waste or take advantage of the time you have in this life. You could be gone tomorrow. All right, that's it. All right, guys, see y'all later. Peace out, peace, love, and happiness. See y'all next week.